So I grabbed two 55 gallon plastic drums. I want to increase my water supply. Uh, in the summertime, we tend to get a lot of rain, but it happens all at once, and then we don't get rain for like five weeks. It seems to be the norm, South Mississippi. We got these two tanks. This will be 100 gallons. This will increase my capacity by 33% roughly. I uh, thought it would be a simple project. Looking at the tops of them, I didn't want to put a vent in the top because this is going to hold leaves and crap, and it's going to be nasty, especially in the winter. So um, I put a little vent in the side. I drilled a hole, covered it with screen, keep the bugs out. Um, and then I got a fitting for the bottom to let the water in. I wanted a one inch hose because again, we get all our rain at one time. And if I don't grab it while it's pouring down, it might not rain again for five weeks. So we get like a one inch rain in 45 minutes and then it's done. So, but I got a problem. The bolt that fit in won't fit through the hole in the top. So, I could cut a bigger hole in the side and try to patch it. But that would lower the amount of water I could keep in there because my patch would be pretty hard to make it waterproof. So, I think I'll drill a hole in the top big enough to drop this through. I think it'll be easier to waterproof this with a patch. And then, uh, Put those in and pretty much that's done with the tanks i just need to go get the plumbing and stuff ready for them remember a couple of weeks ago when i finished the fiberglass holding tank and i resisted from throwing away the last few pieces ah here we go found a use for one of them interesting tank it's white on the inside and black on the outside interesting so if you're going to have a water tank it's got to be black because if any sunlight gets in you're gonna grow algae and it's gonna turn green. So I got a black tanks, and I added benefit. I like this white lining, it's like super, super hard. I think these were for acid, so I guess it's a better plastic than normal. Anyway, I got my uh, through hole thing hot glued to a piece of PVC pipe because I can't reach my arm that long. So let's see. We can get in here. Oh yeah, no problem. I'm gonna take it back out. I'm gonna put a bunch of silicone. <clears throat> Sorry about gagging. The hole is just a little bit bigger than I kind of wish it was, so I'm gonna put some silicone on here to make sure we don't leak water around the corners. If we leak water, it'd be terrible. I'll drain uh, both of these tanks and my big tank, so I need to. Make sure we have good fittings. So I've got the through hole gooped up with a lot of silicone and it's uh, sitting in the hole and it's held in place by the uh, PVC little three quarter inch conduit I got stuck in there. And now I'm screwing on the retaining nut and I'm kind of realizing I got a problem. I drilled the hole, what I thought was the right size. It's a little bit big. And when I tighten up on the fitting, it wants to like scoosh to one side which I don't know if the gasket's going to cover or not, but I've just got a bad feeling right about now as I tighten this thing down with the left-hand thread, which messes with my head all the time. But uh, we're going to get it on here. So my current tank is it has about 220 gallons of usable storage in it. And we had a severe dry spell this summer. We're still having it. We still hadn't got but one decent rain in the last three months. Um, and, we, and never ran out, but... Hadn't had a whole lot of guests. It's been kind of quiet out there. So I just thought uh, it would be good to get some more storage and be ready for the rains this winter and we can fill it up. So I drilled a hole in the top big enough for the fitting to fit through. And now I'm gonna seal it with a, a little chunk of that fiberglass. And it's got no pressure on or anything. So it's just trying to keep the dirty water out. Should be no problem. So, um, Pretty simple, I'm just putting a stainless steel screw in each corner to hold it flat against that silicon caulk. Um, and of course I don't have four screws that match so I gotta change my bit tip for the last screw. But uh, they're all in there and they're stainless steel and uh, this should be pretty much uh, a non-event from here on out. Should keep the dirty water out of the tank that settles in this top because the top is a little recessed.
Here we go. All right, water test number one failed. This one's dripping. And I think there's only like a foot of water in there, so maybe a little more. So that's disappointing. That means I'm gonna have to undo all this caulk. And I, I know what's happening. The, I drill a hole too big and the gasket can slide all the way to one side. So when I tightened it up, I tried to keep it centered and apparently I didn't. So, all right, let's uh, turn the water off and drain it and work on it tomorrow. Okay, here's my situation. This thing leaks, not much, but it leaks. And it is covered with silicone. And I've sealed the hole in the top. So, you know, I could always pull that off. But I'm thinking maybe if I unscrew the retaining nut and the whole thing doesn't fall in the middle, maybe I'll just put a rubber gasket on the outside and put it back together. Try that. Let me see if I can unscrew it without it jacking up. So, I thought I would just put it back together without the silicone. Because if I get it centered correctly, the gasket will seal. It's big enough. It's just not overly big. And apparently, I don't have it centered because I'm leaking like a seal already. So I guess I need to take my plate off, take it all the way out, fabricate some sort of bigger backing plate and a bigger gasket. All right, let's get it. I got a catch-22 here. The silicone makes the threads too tight to unscrew this nut by hand I have to hold the um, thread with something and then every time I put a wrench on it you damage the threads a little bit even though I'm, I'm not having to torque very tight here um, still leaves a little mark which makes it that much harder to put the nut on the next time by hand which means you need to put a wrench and you damage the threads more so it's a it's a vicious spiral I'm just trying to get through while I still have usable threads Look at that. That was easy. Well, we wouldn't get it out. Oh yeah. Okay. See, it's got an awesome, really soft gasket, but it's just not quite big enough. Well, my hole's too big. All right, let's see what we can do. So, <coughs> sorry, I still kind of got the coronavirus. Um, so I took one of the plugs <coughs> from when I drilled these holes out. I did two of them, and I bored a hole in the middle of it. And I'm putting it over my uh, 
through hole fitting and that's going to give me a wider flange hopefully to make up for the oversized hole and I cut a rubber gasket out of a piece of rubber I'll slide this on here that should give me a watertight seal and I don't I don't even think I'm gonna put um <coughs> I'm sorry I don't think I'll put the silicone on it for the first try so if I don't put silicone I can test it right away no I better put silicone I'm gonna put some silicone but I got to get it back in there and get it in the hole uh, that shouldn't be a problem I can just uh, Hook it so it hangs level. Well, that's not gonna do it. Maybe this is gonna be a problem. No, it won't be a problem. I can stick it right in the hole just like that. Okay, I'm going to put some silicone on it, make a mess. got it all right both tanks are full water's coming out the overflow of both tanks and i don't think i have a leak although i made such a mess with the hose and the overflows <clears throat> let's wait till tomorrow morning it ought to all be dried up you know uh, if it is then we can move these tanks to the country and uh, i'm not ready for them there but i can get them out of my shop okay it's been overnight and everything is drying up it's fitting all of the stuff is dry so this one's good and this is my problem tank and there's a little wet spot right here but it's coming from the hose the um the fitting underneath here everything's dry so i'm gonna call it good i didn't push the hose on there very far it was really hard to push i didn't have soap or anything so i think when we do our final installation i can take care of that drip so this is good um i'm gonna drain them and put them in the truck and tomorrow I'm going to bring them to the country and get them out of here. I'm going to turn the valve off at the tank and cut this little nipple right where the area is and glue in my T. And that will be our tie-in. So I placed a little slab a week or two ago. Put some concrete blocks on it and put two layers of two bys in order to raise the tank enough so that the vent is at the same elevation as the overflow so when we get a lot of rain and the water comes up and it starts overflowing it'll be right here on these tanks too if one's too low then it will prevent the other one from uh, getting its maximum fill so we're kind of done now about the wrong pipe fitting so of course so uh to wait till i come back to hook up the pipes and uh start filling we had a good rain all day yesterday so this tank is full again we are plumbed. Just cut the pipe in half here and put a T on a bushing and one inch. And a T in two nineties and two little um, plastic valves. And some plastic hose, which I'm not crazy about. I'm scared a, mo a mouse might chew through it. Although they haven't chewed any of the other plastic stuff under here. But anyway, I might replace that with some rubber hose. Um, we're good to go. It's been it in 20 minutes i'm going to open the main valve and then open this valve and get the pump running again oh i got to close this valve i don't really like all this plastic sitting above the ground i need to pour some kind of slab under it or put a walkway over it or something i don't want anybody to step on it and break it okay let's turn on this valve 
Ooh, it's hard to turn. All right, did you hear bubbling? Now this will send water to the pump. It'll hit, it'll suck some air. I don't know if that's gonna be a deal breaker or not. Let's turn the pump on. No, I guess not. Cycles for a second. Okay, I'm a little, I have 200 gallons right now. If I put it in here and something goes wrong, I can turn the valves off, but I can't get that water back. So I think I might just uh, may open up one and let's see what it does. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to lose all my water, although it wouldn't be the end of the world. Okay, so water is coming from here into there. I'm going to guess it's going to level off at about... I'm going to guess it's going to level off about right there. Still running pretty good, though. No leaks. That's a good thing. Well, everything's lovely. The tank dropped from 200 gallons to 150, so that's 50 gallons. Of that And both... Both of these are hooked up now, so 25 gallons went in each one, which is about half, not half full. Yeah, so super, no leaks. I'm going to leave them both open. And if we ever get some rain, instead of just uh, having a total of about 240 gallons, we can have uh, 340 gallons roughly. That's huge. Because we've been getting by with what I have. It's just been kind of close a couple of times. And it was a long, long, long time between rain. So this will make it more better. All right, guys. And in case anybody's curious, the tanks were 35 bucks a piece. And all the fittings and the flexible pipe and all that probably added up to another $35 each. So, uh, yeah, less than 150 bucks, and we're good to go. Thanks for watching.